Sunday morning service at Ambassador Baptist Church. Delighted to have all you folks. Uh, brothers Rusty and Missy Von Hall had to go out of town this morning for, uh, we don't know if it was a sickness or a funeral of a friend, but pray for them as they travel. They'll be back sometime tomorrow. And so we're glad that you're joining us today by video. Yes, ma'am. You remember my friend Jack and his wife that came to visit me? Mm -hmm. Well, he passed away. Okay. So pray for that family. Yeah, the Thompsons. Thompson. So pray for the Thompson family during this time of loss. Uh, I know Brother Ray's mom passed away this last week. And then uh, Hazel's son-in-law's mother passed away. So pray for both those families as well. And pray for one another. In the meantime, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we're grateful and thankful for another beautiful sunny day. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you uh, that you hear and answer prayer. We pray for all of these that we have mentioned this morning. Thank you that Miss Bonnie's back home and doing well. Thank you that Sterling is doing well and at home. And pray that he'll be with you. You'll be with him through this next session of chemo. Pray you'll be with Rick uh, as he goes through the visits to the doctor this next week. And then, Father, for these families that have lost loved ones, we just pray that you will comfort as only you can. Be with us now as we worship you in song and in the message this morning. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Put a smile on your face because if you don't have a smile, you can't sing this song. Love Lifted Me, 462. On the first. Sing it out. I was sinking deep in sin. Thank you for joining us. 
Don't really have many announcements this morning. Just to kind of remind you of the service times. You know, 10:45 on Sunday morning, uh, 5 o'clock Sunday evening, and then Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Um, join us for as many of those as you can. Um, and then uh, don't forget to pick up a prayer list in the back. There's always copies there. We we go over them on Wednesdays. Um, but take them, grab them, take them with you. Pray for those uh, prayer requests on that list each and every day as much as possible. Um, and then, um, don't do it during church like you know you used to do your kids, but we've got a color page in our announcements, so make sure you pick up one of those and, and do that. We'll have a coloring contest, bring it back, and we'll see who has the best color picture. There you go. Um, tonight, we're going to hear from the Millers. Um, they're, uh, no, not me, through, via me, you know, yeah. through their letter, but we're going to hear from the Millers down in Mexico. It's a very, very interesting uh, letter, um, so uh, be here tonight and, and listen to that. Here's the problem with that. You have to bring your own crayons. We don't yeah. buy crayons. So you bring your own crayons and you look like you're taking notes while you're filming. Yeah. Just be sure you stay inside the line. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. Uh, don't forget, we're going out of February and into March. We're going to march into another month. It's hard to believe, but 10 months from today is Christmas. I know you don't want to hear that, but 10 months from today is Christmas. Now, just two months ago, we were saying a year from now. See how fast time is flying? It may be by March 25th, we'll be in heaven, the Lord will have come That's back, right. and we won't say anything but hallelujah, praise the Lord, and Amen. walking on streets of gold in our mansions, you just never know. I Amen. mean, the way this world is going today, you just never know. That's but right. in the meantime, we have to walk the walk. Amen? So, number 435, he keeps me singing. Amen. Everybody here that's saved, you have a reason to sing. Amen? Right. Hopefully there's within your heart a melody. Hopefully that melody will come out in my voice right now. <laughs> Maestro, if you please.
we should love to tell the story. We should be telling the story. And Miss Debbie's going to come and tell us the story in song. But it's a truth, not a story.
The Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, it's appointed unto man once to die. So get excited this morning, we're all going to die. Uh, but as you go through there and read, uh, you find out that there's one man who did not die. That's right. And there was a reason why he did not die. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. And so this one man that didn't die was Enoch. Verse number 24. And Enoch did what? Walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine loving the Lord so much and being so close to the Lord that you're just walking along and God takes you home? Mm. Now, you and I that are saved, one of these days that's going to take place, and God's going to take us home. Enoch is a picture of the church being raptured out. Those of us that are alive are going to be caught up. Those that are dead are going to be come up from the grave, and we're all going to go up and meet the Lord in the air again. That's what we have to look forward to. I keep waiting for that moment every Sunday morning when I'm up here. Guess what? Either it hadn't happened yet, or I'm wrong, and we missed it. And I'm not wrong, because it's the Bible that I'm giving you. Now, there's some theologians that would say, well, you know, uh, he did die. He just was so close to the Lord that the Lord didn't mention it. But here's the thing. Verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God what? Took him. Took him. God took him. I mean, he took him. Yep. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, says that God translated him. The word translate means to transfer or remove. God removed him. Moved him from one place to another. He took him, body and all. Hey, look, when the rapture takes place, I got news for you. My body won't be here. You can look all you want. It'll be gone. Whether I'm alive or I'm dead, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which alive remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so this body won't be here, so don't look for it if you get left behind. And that's the same thing here. God took him. I mean, it's, it's simple, is it not? And God's going to take you and I one of these days when we die. Yeah. Or if he comes back. The Bible says, for me to live is Christ. And so as we live on this earth, we ought to live for Christ. Yes. Now, let me give you some deep, deep, deep theological thought, okay? Because I like to do that. You all look stunned this morning. Is anybody here this morning say amen? Amen. amen. Okay. The reason that Enoch died... Oh, excuse me, the reason he never died is because he lived. Mm, that's deep. Isn't wow. that deep? Wow, that's the deep. reason that he never died is because he lived. Which means that he lived more than any man lived. Because he hasn't died yet. That makes sense? Isn't that deep? Mm. I knew you guys, I knew it would just be over your heads today. Now, there are only two men in the Bible that it says they walked with God. Enoch is one of them, and God took him. Mm -hmm. Who's the other one? Elijah. Who? Elijah. Elijah. Noah. It doesn't say Elijah walked with God. Now, God took him. Uh, See? Getting deeper. Oh, man. Noah walked with God. Yeah. Chapter 6. And, and God did take Elijah as well. But specifically, it says they walked with God. Now, let me ask you the question this morning. Don't answer out loud. But are you walking with God today? Think about it before you give an answer. Now, both of these men were spared death. Enoch walked with God and was not because God took him. Noah walked with God. And because of the judgment of God on the earth, he was saved in the ark through the judgment through the flood. So both of them walked with God, and both of them were saved. Enoch represents you and I to be caught out of the world before the, the tribulation takes place. Noah represents the Jewish people who will go through the tribulation, but God will protect them through the tribulation to come out on the other side like Noah did. And God did all, the way, all that way back in Genesis before we even think or see about Revelation or Daniel or anything we've been studying recently. Because God had it all planned out, did he not? So there's only two men in the entire Bible that have the testimony that they walk with God. I wonder how many of us are walking with God today. Now, I, 
don't know that God will take us because we're walking with him. But because we belong to him, one day he'll take us. Amen. And I'm looking forward to that. Secondly, uh, I'm looking at these two men because there are some things that are required when you walk with God. These guys walked with God, and in order for them to walk with God, it took discipline. They didn't just get up in the morning and walk with God. How many of you get up in the morning and start praying, talking to God, and walk with God, and just having a great... No, we get up in the morning, we think, i got to get shaved, i got to shower, i got to get dressed, i got to get to work, i got to be to work by this time, if I'm late. We just go all over the place. It takes discipline to walk with God. We have to discipline ourselves. Uh, I don't think either one of these men were half-hearted Christians. I don't think either one of them just walked with God half-heartedly. I don't believe they were just Sunday Christians. These guys were seven-day-a-week Christians. These guys uh, served God, walked with God. Uh, I don't believe they just gave God lip service. Oh, good morning, Lord. It's good to be with you today. We're just walking with you today. We're so delighted to see you today, Lord. I don't think they gave him lip service. Now, we do sometimes, do we not? These two were holy surrendered to God. When you looked at them, you saw God. When you looked at what they did, you saw God. When you listened to what they said, you saw God. Yeah. Matthew 6.33 tells us what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Yes, and so when the world looks at us, they need to see God. And if they look at us and see God, then they know that we are walking with God. So I ask you the question again. Are you wholly surrendered to God? Are you walking with God? Now go back to chapter 5, verse number uh, 20. And all the days of Jared were 960 and 62 years. 962 years. Can you imagine living that long? Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and 2 years and he died. And Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah, who was the oldest man to live. After he begat Methuselah, look at verse 22, and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. So the first 65 years, up until Methuselah, he had Methuselah. After he had Methuselah, he walked with God 300 years. And begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not. For God took him. 300 years. He walked with God. I dare say most of us have trouble walking with God 300 minutes. To be honest. And if I point at you, I've got three fingers pointing back at me. Amen. It's all of us. But he walked with God for 300 years. That takes discipline. That takes oh, work. Mm -hmm. That dirty four-letter word, work. It, it has to work at it. And so our walk with God, today in the world we live in, is kind of like walking through a busy airport. What time is it? Just keep on going. He literally walked with God to the point that when you looked at him, you just saw God. I mean, it's like God just radiated off of him. Now, how do we do that today? The Bible says that we are to let our light shine. Amen? What's that light? It's Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the light. We need to let him shine through us when we walk with God. So I want to give you this morning some things that I think are important and ask you the question, who are you walking with? Because you're either walking with God or you're walking with the world and the flesh. There's only two types of walks. God made it very clear that it will walk in the spirit, will not walk in the flesh. So uh, I hope that this word will encourage you today to walk with God. Number one, a commenced walk. C-O-M-M-E-N-C-E-D, commence. The word commence means to begin or start. You have to begin the walk. God's not going to come grab you, Miss Jennifer, by the arm and say, okay, Miss Jennifer, I want you to walk with me today. Mm -hmm. Let's walk. Yeah. God's not going to do that. Yeah. We have to start it. We have to begin it. The word Enoch means to initiate or uh, to start. Enoch started the walk with God on his own. He initiated. He commenced it. Now, why did he do that? First of all, number one, there was a desire. He had a desire. 
Now, don't answer out loud. Don't make a face because it gives you away. Do you have a desire to walk with God? Do you want Him to walk with you? We sing the song, and He walks with me, and He talks with me. Yeah. Yeah, amen. But do we walk with Him? Number one, you can't walk with God till you get saved. So if you're here this morning and you're not saved, you can't walk with God. You need to be saved. Because you don't have a relationship with Him until you get saved. You don't become a child of God until you get saved. So if you're not saved, watch it by video or whatever, you can't walk with God because you, you don't have a relationship. So we need to have that first of all. Maybe, you know, through Adam and through uh, Cain and Abel and Shem and all those folks, Enoch saw something that caused him to want to walk with God. What is it today that caused you to want to walk with God? I mean, there was a good line and a bad line, Cain and Abel, mm -hmm. and it went out from there. And we've got good lines and bad lines in our families, but we have to desire to want to be in his company. When you get up in the morning, do you desire to speak to God? Do you desire to read his word? Do you desire to pray? Do you desire to walk with him through the day? Yeah, she does. She does. Do you? Yeah. Out of the mouth of babes, amen? That's right. Enoch did that for 300 years. It took discipline. He started it. He, he initiated it. I mean, just knowing that he walked for 300 years with God is amazing to me. I think about my own life. What kind of walk do I have? And so he walked. He, he desired a walk. He wanted to have a walk. He was saved. He, he trusted the Lord. He wanted to walk with the Lord. Do you have that kind of desire this morning? Because God's not going to force himself upon you. We have choice. We can choose to be saved or not. That choice is yours to go to heaven or go to hell, to be saved or to be lost. God gave us that choice. God's not going to force us to get saved. So you have a choice. Enoch heard God. Enoch loved God. Enoch commenced and started a relationship with God and decided he was going to walk with God. We have to do the same thing. It's up to us. God's not going to force it upon us. Now, you have to have a desire to be in his company. I promise you, and I'll be the one to confess because none of you will, but there are some mornings when I get up, get in front of God and Communicate with God. It's not necessarily on the top of my list. Yeah. The wife needs coffee. i got to get the coffee started and get yeah. it ready for that's it. That's right. You know? I mean, that's important. Yes, sir. <laughs> a coffee wife is a happy wife, and a happy wife is a happy life. Is that not how it goes? Oh, come on now. Preach <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, in the Bible, when he was on this earth, would pass by, and people would do what? They would request his presence. Uh, over in Luke chapter 24, it talks about that. If you want to write it down, look it up later. But they, they requested, they wanted his presence. They wanted him to be there. Uh, a daughter was dying, or this person needed this, or this, or that. And they requested his presence. Yeah. We, ought to, we ought to desire to be in his presence. If we love him, we want to be with him. You that are married, you always want to be with your spouses. You that have kids, you want to be with your kids. You that have grandkids, really want to be with your grandkids. Amen. And so we have to have a desire. Secondly, we have to have a determination. Not only a desire, but a determination. He was determined to be more than what his ancestors were. What did Cain do? Cain killed Abel. Yeah. You follow it down through history. He determined to be more than that. Uh, he wanted to be better. Not out of arrogance, not out of an ego, not out of... Those kind of things, but he dared to be different. He wanted to walk with God. He wanted to be closer to God. He wanted to be closer to God whether anyone else did or not. Yeah. We ought to have that same desire. We ought not to worry about other people being close to God. We ought to be close to God whether they are or not. Because their relationship shouldn't affect our relationship with God. And so he desired that. He was determined to walk as close to God as he could walk. And apparently he got real close. Because it says he walked with God and God took him. Wouldn't it be amazing in the middle of this message if the rapture just took place and God took all of us? Amen. I wouldn't be upset with that. 
Now, here's the thing. Listen carefully if you don't get anything else. Just because you're saved doesn't mean you're walking with God. There are a lot of folks today that are saved sitting at home. Not reading their Bibles, not praying, not going to church. They're saved, but they're not walking with God. And one day we'll all stand before God and we'll all give an account. And God will set the record straight. Amen? Yeah. And so just because you're saved doesn't mean you're walking with God. Enoch had the desire and the determination. But he's the one that had to start it. He's the one that had to kick it off. Secondly, a confirmed walk. A confirmed walk. Confirm means firmly established in a particular habit, belief, or way of life, and unlikely to change. And so Enoch's walk with God was unlikely to change because it was a confirmed walk. He confirmed, he started, he desired, and he was going to walk with God. And that was obviously not going to change because God took him. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? If they're not agreed, it's a mess, is it not? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, sometimes they take this verse out of context because they don't understand the biblical definition of the word agreed. Agreed means an appointment or a set time. Tim and Jennifer are planning a... Oh, I better... Does, that, does he know? Yeah. Okay. They're planning a birthday thing for for Tim. It's going to be the big 5-0. The big Hawaii 5-0. Yeah. Because he was in Hawaii. And so what have they done? They've agreed to have a party. They've agreed on a, a, a particular thing at a particular time. Yeah. Okay? And so Enoch agreed with God yeah. and who God was and what God meant. And so they walked together. They agreed. They were able to walk together. To walk with God, you need to set an appointment. Yes, sir. Me. You need to make a time. Yeah. You need to decide that you're going to walk with God. Guess what? That takes work. Because we get busy with everything. From coffee making, getting ready for work, to whatever it is. Now don't misunderstand me, okay? You can talk to God anytime. But you have to make an appointment to walk with Him. We can pray anywhere, anytime. But we have to make an appointment to walk with Him. and Set a time that we're going to walk with Him. Point number one, a date. Set a date. Now, when you guys were young and dating, what would you do? You set a time. Tim said, Jennifer, I'm going to be by the house at 8 o'clock. I'm going to pick you up. We're going to go eat. We're going to go walk in the moonlight over in the park. Be ready. Amen. And Jennifer said, I'm ready. Let's go. We set a time, did we not? It was an important time. We set a date. We're ready to go. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8 it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. There was a certain time when God would come in the garden to fellowship with Adam and Eve. It was in the morning. It was a time set by God in the cool of the what? Of the day. And so Adam and Eve would have to be ready. They'd have to plan to have that time with God. When God came in the garden. So that they could talk with him and walk with him. We need to set a time. Now, here's the thing. Our biggest failure is that we don't discipline ourselves to set a time to walk with God. Now, it doesn't have to be in the morning. Some people work all night. They can't do it in the morning. They sleep in the morning. But we have to set a time. It doesn't matter when you set the time. What matters is that you have a time set when you're going to get alone and walk with God. Tonight, if you'll come back, we're going to be talking about getting in the closet with God. Kind of goes right along with all this. I don't know why God did that. I guess he wanted the two messages to line up with each other. God just has a way of doing that. Amen? But you've got to set a time that you're going to be with God. Now, I would suggest it be first thing in the morning. When you're fresh and you just woke up, you say, but i got to get ready for work. Hey, set the clock back a half hour. Get up a half hour earlier. What? Here's the thing. God wakes me up every morning before my alarm clock even thinks about going on. So it's good. I get up. Someone in our house is still sleeping. I sneak in, put the coffee on, go to my office, and walk with God. Amen. And then I do it at night, too. But I find at night, usually there's some sin confession that needs to go on. And then there's that, 
oh, it's been a long day. And next thing you know, my walk's not walking. It's walking in dreams. <laughs> so do it. But if you're a nighttime person, do it at nighttime. Here's the thing. Make an appointment. Make a time. Make a date so that you will walk with God. Get alone with him. And walk with him and talk with him. He walks with me and talks with me. But here's the thing. It requires discipline. Yeah. How many of you disciplined yourself to get up every morning and go to work? How many of you discipline yourself to fix breakfast or lunch or supper or discipline yourself when you're going to take your medicine? I mean, we set everything. We discipline ourselves. We set dates. We set times. When are you going to set a time to walk with God? To, be, to follow Him and to do what He's commanded. That leads to the second thing. Not only a date, but discipline. Because Enoch set a date with God, I seriously doubt that he was going to stand God up. <laughs> hey, have you ever stood God up? Don't answer out loud. We're afraid to set a date or a time to walk with God because we're afraid we'll let God down. We'll disappoint God. We'll stand God up. What we need to do is decide in our minds and in our hearts that we're going to set a date, we're going to set a time, discipline ourselves to be there, and then we won't disappoint God. Not that we could disappoint God, but we won't let God down. And God will be there and we'll be there. And so when you make a promise to start a time with God, keep that promise. And when you start walking with God and keeping that promise, you're going to see the things in your life are going to change. Man, your days are going to go by so much better. Yeah. And you're going to have the Lord walking with you during all those persecutions and all those things that you're going through. And you won't be like me pulling your hair out and panicking and going crazy. And, and your wife have to say, settle down, settle down, settle down. It'll be all right. Don't panic. Amen. And so we've got to discipline ourselves. We've got to set a date. We've got to start walking with God. Not because, but because God wants us to. Because it's what we ought to do. Enoch did it for 300 years. Surely we can do it for 60, 70, 80, 90 years, however long God allows us to live. Nobody's hit 90 here yet, I don't think, but some are close. Amen? So you got to do that. Thirdly, you got a, a consuming walk. Now, I don't mean that in a negative way, like the fire consumed my steak on the grill. Because <laughs> that has happened. But look what it says. Enoch walked with God, and he was not. I want you to notice, he was not. He was not. That means two things. First, it means he was not because God took him. It's what it says right there. It is not God took him. I mean, when you're there and God takes you, you're not. Is that true? Secondly, it meant that he would walk with God, that Enoch would become so consumed, so caught up in walking with God, that he would lose his own identity. That's what I was saying earlier. We ought to be so into God that when people look at us, they see God, they don't see us. There's nothing here to see. And he was so into God that, and so consumed with God that... Uh, he was on the back burner and God was out front. That's where we need to be. There's people today that are running for office and it's all about me and what I did and what I'm doing, what I can do. I don't care what they can, What does God do? What can God do? You know what? I'm pretty sure in John 15 that God said without Him we can do nothing. And so uh, we need to be consumed with God. We need to let Him take over of us just, just so that people see Him. What did it say? Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. We ought to empty ourselves of self and let the Holy Spirit come in and just be consumed with God. So when people look at Miss Carolyn, they say, wow, look at that godly radiant off of her face and her eyes and her hair. and just, and it just, man, you can tell. What did it say in the New Testament? It said they could tell that they had been with Jesus. Wouldn't it be great if we went out of here today and people looked at us and said, Wow, you've been to church. You've been with Jesus. Yeah. And we just have that glow. Amen? That's what this is talking about. God so consumed him that God was in control. That's what God wants from you and I today. Uh, the reason that we can't get that way is because our will is too big. 
What did Jesus say? Not my will, but thy will be done. And we want my will, do we not? If we're honest, do we not? Most of the time? Let's start asking for God to have his will. Now, here's the thing. When we are consumed by God, the first thing is God picks the direction. Where he leads me, I will follow. Enoch didn't ask every minute, well, God, what do you want me to do here? What do you want me to do there? He was so consumed with God that he just knew the direction God wanted him to go. They walked together. Enoch never offered his opinion. He just accepted what God said. And walked with God. And God said, you a good man. Come on, let's go. And so he picked the destination. The reason we have to ask God all the time is that your will is because our will's too big. Listen, God gave us a book. An instruction book. God gave us his word. This book tells us his will. And if we lack wisdom, he says, hey, just ask me. I'll give it to you freely. I won't even charge you. What do the psychiatrists charge these days? Hundreds of dollars an hour. You can go to God and ask for free, and he'll give it to you for free. Amen? And so God wants us to walk in a direction. And in order to walk in God's direction that he picks out, we have to walk with God. But we're usually walking the other way in our direction, doing what we want to do. God will lead us in the right way. What did he give us the Holy Spirit to do? To guide us into what? All truth. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And the all truth is, he's going to guide us to what the Bible says because Jesus is the way, the truth, truth and the life. And if he's guiding us to truth, he's guiding us to Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus yeah. is not going to lead us astray when we walk with him, is he? Yeah. And so he determines our direction. Did I say that? Yeah. And he determines our destination. Yeah. Notice the phrase, God took him. Enoch didn't do anything. He walked with God and God took him. He had nothing to do with it. Enoch didn't wake up this morning and say, you know what, I think if I get out there and walk with God, maybe God will take me. He just walked with God. He just did what he was supposed to do. God took him where God wanted him to go. And if you and I today will walk with God, guess what? God will take us where he wants us to go. Where he leads me, I will follow. And so we get to a point when we're walking with God, and he takes us to that point where he wants us to go. Now, he does it through this. You know how I know? Because God said, make it a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Why would we do that? So that God can take us where he wants us to go. Mm -hmm. He can direct us. And he directs us through this book. He tells us in this book how to repent of our sin. He tells us in this book how to get saved. How to call on him and, and ask him to save us. And how that we can have eternal life and get our name written in the last book of life. He writes in there the plan that he's going to come back one day and take us away. Mm -hmm. And so in that meantime, we ought to be walking with him. So are you walking with him today? He was so consumed with God that he just crossed right over into the heavenlies. Can you picture this in your mind? Enoch and God walking along, and God looks ahead and says, Hey, Enoch, there's my home. Let's go. And off they went. I mean, gone. And one of these days, the trump of God is going to sound. And guess what? We're going right to the same place. And then we can see Enoch. We can see Noah. And yep. we can see all the people that we've read about in the Bible. And so, he just took him. I wouldn't mind if God just did that to me. It'd be painless. We'd be gone. And in the moment, the twinkling of an eye, transformed. He's a picture of us going out before the tribulation takes place. Because what was about to happen was God was going to judge the world with a flood. And so Enoch was taken out. God gives us good pictures, does he not? Lastly, very quickly, because I know you're thinking about Whataburger and McDonald's. A contagious walk. A contagious walk. Look at chapter 5, verse 21. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. Verse 25. 
And Methuselah lived 180 and 7 years and begat Lamech. Look at verse number 28-29. And Lamech lived 180 and 2 years and begat a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. Noah. Nice name, huh? Look over chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah did what? Walked with God. And so his great-grandpa walked with God. And now he's walking with God. Does that not tell you that it's important how we raise our kids and grandkids and great-grandkids? To teach them in the right direction, to go in the right way. And so here's the second man in the Bible that says that he walked with God. Amongst all the evil and all the corruption and all the things that were going on in the world, men were dying, sin was rampant all around, there's Noah walking with God. Now here's the thing. If Enoch can walk with God, and Noah can walk with God in the evil times that they lived in. Because the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. We're in those days right now. If they could walk with God in those days, why can't we walk with God in those days? And so Enoch's walk was contagious all the way down to Noah. And Noah walked with God. Now Enoch, as I've already said, is a picture of the rapture of the church. Taken out before the flood. Just like you and I, the church will be taken out before the tribulation. Noah is a picture of the Jewish nation. God is going to deal with them and carry them through the tribulation. Like being in the ark. Until he finishes what he's going to do with them. It's also a picture of Christ that you and I are in the ark. And, and we're safe from the things that the world has. And so, he, his walk was contagious down to Noah. Let me ask you this morning. Who's contagious off of your walk? Who are you influencing with your walk? People are watching you. People are watching me. And so, we need... We need to walk with God. We need to determine that we're going to be more than normal. I mean, they laughed at Noah. You know they did, building that big boat. No water, no rain, no nothing. I'm sure they laughed at Enoch, walking with God. They're laughing at us as Christians today because we take a stand. But here's the thing. Uh, you and I today, we need to set a date. We need to set a time. We need to discipline ourselves and determine in our minds that we're going to walk with God. Then we need to discipline ourselves to get in that time mode and keep that date. It takes work. It takes discipline. Noah let God pick his direction. I want you to build a boat. I want you to take you and your family. I want you to go on the boat. I'm going to save you because you walked with me. I'm going to protect you through that. Enoch walked with God, and God chose the destination, took him. You and I today that are saved, God provided his son for salvation. Those of us that are saved, God has picked our destination. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Right. So if you're saved today, your destination is heaven. If you're watching by video, you're sitting here today, and you're not saved, I'm sorry, but your destination is hell. And no, God didn't send you there because God provided the way. He paid the debt. So if you go to hell, it's because you chose to reject the payment. You refuse to pay your bills, they'll come take your house and car and everything. You pay your bills, you get to keep it. You refuse Jesus, you'll spend an eternity in hell. He's done everything that needs to be done. All you have to do is believe and call on him to get saved. That's what the Bible says. So this morning as we stand with our heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around, I ask you the question again, do you walk with God? Only you can answer that question. If you do, are you going to have to commence 
and, and get it started and get it set, that's up to you if you're not walking with God. You're going to have to have a desire. You're going to have to make a dedication. You're going to have to discipline yourself. Set a day, a time to walk with God. Discipline to keep that date. Discipline to do what God has said. And if you'll do that, God will bless you and God will take you to the destination. If you're not saved, I've already told you the destination is hell. So today, the first thing you need to do is to come to God and get saved because God wants to walk with you. That's why he sent his son Jesus to die for your sin. So that we can get saved and walk with him and talk with him. And he'll lead us and direct us in all that we do. And so this morning, if you're saved, are you walking with him? If you're not, then you need to start. And I've given you all that, all those steps. If you're here today or watching and you're not saved, you need to get saved, then you need to start. Set a date, set a time, discipline yourself. This time and this part of the day, I'm going to get with God. I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to read his word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do what God's commanded me to do. Until God comes and calls us home. Amen. So I don't know where you're at today while she plays. If God has spoken to your heart, some have already come. If you need to come or there at your seat, if you can't kneel down here, God's speaking to your heart to make a decision. Now is the time to make that decision. Start right now. Set a date right now that you're going to make that decision. Otherwise, the devil will just come in and whisper and say, don't listen to that nutcake up there. He don't know what he's talking about. Just keep going the way you're going. Everything's good. Don't rock the boat, baby. That's what the devil would have you do. That's not what God would have you to do. Abraham passed the test by being obedient to God and offering his son. Enoch passed the test by walking with God and God took him. Noah passed the test by walking with God and God saw him through uh, the, the punish the judgment on this earth. You and I that are saved today, God is going to be with us and protect us. We're in his hand. Nothing can pluck us out until the rapture takes place or until he calls us home. The only thing today is those that are not saved need to get saved. Otherwise, they won't make it to that destination. But God's already paved the way. Amen. Our Father, we love you today. We're thankful for your word. We're thankful for Enoch and that he walked with God and what we can learn from his life. Thankful that Noah, through all the evil in the world in his day, still walked with God and you protected him and gave him as an example. And then today, Father, we know that we live in the world that was like in the days of Noah and that your return could be at any moment. And so I pray that you will help us today to determine to commence to discipline ourselves to walk with you like Enoch did, like Noah did. Until you call us home. If there's one today watching that's not saved, I pray that they'll call upon you to save their soul today before it's eternally too late. We give you all the praise for it in Christ's name. Amen. Alright, if you'll come back tonight, we're going to be looking at getting in there.